So I know this is very challenging, but uh, Caroline Rinker um, has left us way too early. For those that uh, had the pleasure of knowing her, uh, myself included, and so many others, uh, just a, a bright ray of sunshine every day. Uh, Mr. James Blaney, though, will come and speak on her behalf and accept this award. James. Well, good evening. Um, this is a shame, but it's a great honor. Randy, thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the Edison Report, I'm very grateful to be able to introduce Caroline to everyone who may not know her. And this is nowhere near enough time to really get into who and what, but at least you'll get a taste and hopefully understand why this is happening. Caroline was born and raised in the Bronx, a true blue New Yorker from day one. She was raised by Caroline, her mother, and her father, Eugene. As an only child and a daddy's girl, she became a Rangers fan and a diehard Yankee fan. That enabled her to hang with the boys and being smart as a whip, she was very adept at coming up with stats quickly and at the moment. She was one of the guys, but she was also a woman as well. Out of high school, she decided to work instead of attend college. She found a position at a company called Lighting Associates, coincidentally run by, as you heard earlier, this very intelligent other nominee and winner this evening, or whatever saying about uh, Frank, um, who saw her potential. And in no time, Caroline had gone from being a secretary to handling very high-end clients and large dollar amounts and building the beginning of what was gonna be an amazing career. Frank later would open another company called Lighting Dynamics you heard about, which became Enterprise Lighting Sales. He had asked Caroline to take an executive position with that company. Although she was intrigued and flattered, she chose not to, and instead, she ended up going to manage JDC Lighting. If some of you are not old enough to remember these, you missed out. <laughs> You got to know that. Uh, there she became involved with some of the largest contractors and biggest projects that were going on in the city. And by the way, this woman loved classic rock and roll, Led Zeppelin and the Stones. You two still haven't found what I'm looking for was her favorite song, ironically. And um, I think that's important to share. After several years at JDC, she was approached by Joe DiBernardo and Carl Coppola she was tapped for the national sales manager position at Mark Lighting, and while she became a house, oh, and, and she took that position, and for the next seven years helped navigate Mark to massive growth, which probably everyone here knows, Acuity ended up acquiring it, I think largely because of those efforts, and at the same time, she was making hers a household name in some of the best design firms in the country. Kapow! She used to buy Super Bowl boxes every year at Pete's Tavern in the village, and she loved going to Arthur Avenue for Italian food. It was now 2009, and that's when I approached her and asked, she asked if she had any interest to start a rep agency here in New York. And once again, I don't know why, but she did it. She said yes. She took the leap, and in 2010, O'Blaney Rinker Associates opened its doors, Incidentally, with no lines and no salespeople. Uh, but, but as an aside, she used to quote Joe Pesci, De Niro, Captain Kirk, and the Three Stooges, all in our sales meetings. <laughs> Just after the agency opened, uh, she, who, although she had already been on the board of the DLF, she was voted into and held the position of president of the DLF for two years. She did that. And then at the end of her second term, she was asked by Burt Grant. Everyone should know who Burt Grant is in this room, especially with education being here. And she took that position as co-chair for the next seven years for education. Uh, incidentally, whenever we got takeout, whether it was pizza, sandwiches, whatever, Caroline would go to the kitchen and get a plate, a fork, a knife, and a napkin and sit down and eat with dignity. This dame had style. I got to tell you this. She learned an industry so well, she knew it in Braille. 
Caroline was a rare breed. She came up in a male-dominated industry, and she held her own. She mentored more than a handful of women during her career, and she liked to root for the underdog, the downtrodden, and had a heart of gold. She was not afraid to make tough decisions to improve her life. Her toughness and tenderness were a unique blend, and she was full of plenty of both of those. Every career decision took her to a higher high, and she never left a position or a job on bad terms. She was honest, trustworthy, loyal, confident, and truly cared about the people around her, and was never afraid to do what was right. She attributed her strong value system to her mother. They were close, very close. She was her namesake. Caroline was her mom's name. People called her Dolly. Her career spanned across all sectors of the industry, and considering the numerous people she's interacted with, you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone that would have a negative word to say about her, and her resume speaks for herself. It's my opinion that the planet and our industry is a better place because Caroline was here. She did it. Thanks for listening.